So, well, first of all, thank, thank you very much uh, for the organization to, for putting together this, uh, this event. Uh, I'm Mark Evry. I'm responsible for what we call strategic projects and processes, which is a little bit a strange name for, for a job. But basically, I, what I'm doing is basically leading the whole uh, project execution uh, and, and strategic execution of, of Zurich in, in Spain. No? Um, basically, well, this is a short presentation of the company. Basically, we are a, 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 an insurance multinational company. We work basically in 210 countries and territories around the world. And we, we do any line of business except for health at, at, a, at a global level, uh, from retail customers to small businesses, companies, and, and large corporations. So we do basically anything. In Spain, we have uh, more than 130 years of experience or, uh, in the Spanish market. We've come from the merge of different companies uh, during this time. And we actually, right now, operate with the brand Zurich in Spain. But also, we've got joint ventures with Bank Sabadell. So you buy uh, a, a, an insurance product from Bank Sabadell. Uh, it's our product also. We also have got a uh, joint venture with Deutsche Bank, basically uh, with life as well as uh, pension plans type of, of products. And uh, also we've got a different brand called Clean, which is uh, a brand we launched last year and is basically aiming for millennial people and basically it's type of like insurance product uh, or product solutions, insurance product solutions based on the lifestyle of the of the of the millennials. So, uh, also we've got distribution uh, through our most traditional channels, basically brokers and, and agents, as well as uh, a lot of partners in in automotive and, and other banking partners. So, basically, if you buy most of the of the uh, of the insurance products that are distributed through car manufacturers, you've got a good chance that uh, it's going to be with Zurich. Okay. Uh, in Spain, we've got around 2,000 employees. We insured 85% uh, of our of the Ibex 35 uh, corporations, and we've got more than 3 million uh, policies to point for customers. So it's 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 a it's, a, it's quite a, a, a significant company. Uh, so basically, what I wanted to explain to you here is uh, why we're doing this journey and what we are doing to, to solve it. So why we are doing this is because uh, basically our environment is changing and it's changing very quickly. So we've got a lot of, uh, um, we've got a lot of uh, changes with, the, with our customers. So if I remember 10 years ago, uh, basically you had very basic insurance products, household, especially in the retail sector. You've got household, you've got uh, motor, uh, and you didn't have a lot of changes. Basically, it was a commodity, and it was basically on price. Ten years ago, uh, the whole, or, or a little bit more, the whole direct channel grew in Spain, but also in other parts of the world. And, and that put a lot of more information on prices and coverage to the customer. So basically, the customer got much more expert in, in what they were buying. But that was only uh, the beginning of what is going to happen in the next few, few five to ten years. Okay, so what we are seeing is that our customers uh, are changing the or the needs that our customers have are changing. So the, so the insurance solutions are changing also. Uh, this means that nowadays you've got people renting houses through uh, Airbnb, or you've got uh, ride sharing with uh, Uber or Cabify, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All of this is changing our environment in terms of like what kind of insurance solutions we need to provide to our customers. It's not only this, but also the distribution channels are changing. So in the past, we used to distribute by brokers and agents. Nowadays, we distribute also with direct digital business. But in the future, we are going to distribute a lot through uh, what we are calling, and I'm pretty sure you, you, you also know, ecosystems. That means that the boundaries between the different, uh, the different industries are changing. So before, we used to do insurance products, and the car manufacturer used to manufacture cars, or at least assembly the cars. Nowadays, the car manufacturer is, uh, is manufacturing the car, assembling the car. Well, maybe not manufacturing, because they outsource all of that. 
but they are assembling the car, but then they sell you the credit for the car, and then they do the insurance for you also, and now they want to get into mobility. You know? So they are trying to, to get the, the whole uh, ecosystem of how we will move in the future. So all of this is changing, and it's going to change the way we operate with our customers and distributors, as well as what kind of solutions we are, we are having to serve our, uh, the, the needs of our customers. Also, new risks are appearing in, in, the, in the insurance ecosystem. Uh, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you know a lot uh, about like, uh, the impact of cyber risk in small and medium-sized companies and, and how this is evolving. So these are new risks also that are changing, uh, that risk that we don't have experience in. So it is changing the way, uh, the, uh, the kind of products and, and, and how we need to operate with, with those products. Also regulation, I mean, GDPR I'm also is quite uh, normal uh, in any in industry. Basically, uh, the whole regulation of how we deal with our personal, or with the personal data of our customers is going to put a lot of limitations in, in the way we operate, and we need to look for new solutions. IDD, basically information directive around how we should inform our customers based on the 2018, 2008 uh, financial uh, crack. So it's, it's, it's going to change the way we need to present the information to our customers and the kind of engagement that we have with them, not only us, but also with our distribution and our distribu distributors with, with them. No? Solvencia 2, it's basically like Basilea, uh, and we've got also PSD2 as, as, as open banking. So all of this is going to change the way, I mean, it's going to limit in some ways the way we operate with our customers and what we can do with them. It is also sometimes opening new opportunities of, of, uh, of business and, and touch points and in relation with, with our customers, such as uh, PSD2, like uh, that can open a, a new paradigm uh, in order to, to find new ways of, uh, of, of business with our customers. Competitors are changing very rapidly too. We've got since uh, the technological companies that actually has more information about our customers than we do have. So we don't know if they are going to, to want to enter some of, the, some of the insurance business. We've got InsurTech, or startups of, of the insurance uh, ecosystem. Uh, we've got a huge in, uh, uh, flow of money from, uh, or capital from investment uh, to, to startups. And a few years ago, uh, they were basically focused on, on on the, uh, on the direct channels and how they build new uh, direct channels with the customers. Nowadays, they are in the whole value chain of the insurance company. So they are finding uh, competitive advantages in the, insur in the whole insurance chain, okay? So basically, uh, that is going to disrupt, and you never know if one of these new insured companies are going to be the one that is going to take a good part of the, of the cake, no? And then, also, our distributors and, and suppliers, the most traditional ones, are also changing their, their way to operate. We were saying before that the car manufacturers are breaking the boundaries of what is the perimeter of, of their business and doing other things. These guys, since agents, brokers, and also service, service companies, they are also expanding uh, their reach in terms of like the value chain of the insurance company. You know? and, uh, all of this is, is going to disrupt our, our, our ecosystem, as well as the technology. You know? this is basically, all of this is powered by, by new technologies from artificial intelligence, robotics, big data, which is changing the, the game. You know? It's basically uh, making all of this much easier than it was before. So the, this is basically the, the perfect storm for, 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 a, for a sector, for an industry. And this is now uh, the time for, for the insurance industry, we believe. S uh, having said that, is, well, what, what should we do with that? No? Uh, basically, we don't know what we have to do, but we know we, we have to act, and we have to act quickly. No? Well, the answer of, of, of the executive committee was like, you, you, need to, you need to double your investment in, 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 in technology basically in two or three years. Uh, even this is a little bit more, even not only two. And, and when, we, when we have this, it's like, well, we need to do more things and quicker, and we need to add more value into what we are doing. 
so that we can respond to the market uh, quicker and, and, and actually responding to the changes in, into, into what is happening at, a, at an industry level. No? Uh, so how we solve this? And, and that was the question that we were asking ourselves a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago. Uh, and, and then we believe that part of the solution is, is uh, basically being a, a more agile company. As I said before, we are a company that has like 130 years of experience in Spain, even more at, at a group level. And it is not easy to change the mindset of like 130 years of people doing things in a certain way. It's, it's, it's quite difficult, actually. And it's not only this, but as you see, we are a company that has like uh, the Zurich business, but then we have joint ventures with different companies, we've, we've got different brands, et cetera, et cetera. We go through distributed, uh, through a distribution market with our brokers and agents. It's quite a complex. And then on top of that, we, it's, it's 2,000 people in, in total in, in Zurich and Spain. So it's quite complex. So we believe that if we wanted to do that, we couldn't do that only by, by implementing new tools and processes. What we believe is that it has to be a, a change of the mindset of the people. So we need to act not only uh, from the IT part, or, or we, we've got to act as a company globally in terms of like changing the way we actually uh, uh, do our projects and, and actually deliver the, the sorry, deliver the, the return to our investments. You know? So we see uh, agile or more than agile business agility in terms of like uh, what we, how we deliver uh, in a holistic view, basically changing, putting some tools and processes, but also changing the principles, the values, and the, and the mindset of, of, of the company. We started this journey a year and a half ago, so we are pretty new on this, and probably we, we are still at the beginning of, of what we are doing. But when, I mean, to translate this into something which is actionable, what, what we did is like we created four factors. The two the, at the top, they are basically the, the hard part of the factors. The two uh, at the bottom is basically the, the soft part of the, uh, or the, those factors that are actually enablers uh, of, of the other two, no? But basically, we've, we have started to experiment working with Kanban, design thinking, and Scrum, basically not as isolated, but sometimes in a collaborative way. Also, we have been working on, on, on creating new multidisciplinary teams. Basically, we've got one team in, in, in one part of the, of the company, and we are st extending that to another team, uh, which we are, I would say, midway to our, what we want to, to be. And then as enablers, we thought it is not possible to work in a different way if we have the spaces that we had that we had like 20 years ago. And, and it is very clear if, if you go to a school nowadays, the way they are set up schools, in, in, at least in Barcelona, are completely different to the way that most of us learn in a school. Uh, the, 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 the spaces in, in the schools uh, have changed radically. So basically, if we want to work in a different way, we need to find spaces that are more collaborative, especially because those guys that are five to 10 years old now, in 15 years, they will not understand how to work in a desk. They will work in a different way. And then also, and, uh, uh, the culture. I mean, it's 130 years of experience uh, in Spain. This means we need to change uh, some of the, some things. It means changing profiles of people, changing the way of work, working more on, on co-creation, changing how we measure things and how we do it uh, uh, visually for everyone, and also creating this uh, uh, sense of urgency into the company. Because without that sort, uh, sense of urgency, we will not be able to make all the changes that we want to make uh, as quickly as we want to make and actually creating the, the, the value, you know? So our lessons learned about these four things is we've been working with, with the three. Uh, Kanban uh, is a little bit different from, from design thinking at school, but basically uh, the power of Kanban is that it, is, it allows us to uh, uh, put together the upstream and the downstream of the process and uh, of the value 
um, and then change the process from a push process to, to a more pull process. So we are using it basically in, in a lot of, uh, I think we've got four or five Kanban right now. But, uh, we, we have uh, Kanban implemented basically not to create uh, an asset because sometimes when, uh, when we have like big uh, projects with uh, a lot of, uh, or with dates, et cetera, et cetera, it's very difficult to, to actually uh, create something more uh, based on continuous improvement and, and evolution. So we, we, we don't always use it. But then, uh, but then it helps us to understand much better the, uh, the, the prioritization of the, of the upstream and how this relates to the, to the, to the downstream. Other things we've been using design thinking sometimes, basically in the creation of new products. We have renewed the, the, whole, the whole product base in, in these three years. And, and what we see is that uh, we are using it and, and we've got some problems sometimes because especially in the way we iterate uh, in, in those more traditional channels. When we are trying to distribute in traditional channels, it is a little bit difficult to have the the, the more iteration of the of the of the solution, no, and the Scrum basically we are using it in as a uh, as a as a way of delivery, and I will talk a little bit more about that later on in the next slide. But basically, in in all our digital uh, uh, projects, because uh, we've got a different platform and it's easier to to integrate. But the real change. It's, it's about how we, how we do from an organizational perspective. I think I, I was talking uh, to Chavez uh, on, on Mango because I found very interesting what they are doing or what he was explaining in terms of like organization. And we have started to, to do some of this, but, at, but we, we need to, to change this uh, and to scale this uh, much more. No? So basically, we've got, well, it, there are two setups here, but basically it's three. We've got like the regular setup, which is our, all the back office part that we basically we work with our processes and with our methods without changing anything. And then we've got two experiments. We've got the experiment number one, which basically are projects that are working within uh, the current processes, organization, and, and existing services but we are introducing Kanban on those. We've got four or five of those. And what we see is, um, is a list that we have an improvement in our lead times, uh, delivery lead times. And, and, and we are, have started to make decisions based on the information that Kanban is, is providing us in terms of allocation of resources or in terms of like uh, if we need to integrate some services into, into that uh, piece of work. Uh, or uh, limit the whip, et cetera, et cetera. But the, still, the, the, the impact of that is, is quite limited. On the other hand, experiment number two is for all the digital solutions. We have taken and we have separated that from the company. Uh, and we have created a multidisciplinary team, which they have a reporting line, a solid reporting line to the functions. but. Uh, but they work as a team, and they've got a common objective. And we have been able to shorten our delivery cycle in, in terms of like product from, I would say, 80% of the time. So we, it takes 80% less time to build a product with this setup that it was taking to build it in, in the regular setup. Obviously, there are other things. Like uh, when you are dealing with traditional uh, distribution, it is more difficult to make some, some uh, uh, MVPs and then uh, evolution there because they, you've got someone that is in the middle between you and the customer that also is part of the conversation. But having said that, uh, the organization uh, of a multidisciplinary team focus on, on the value stream, focus on what is uh, what are the customer needs and how uh, how we uh, bring solutions to those customer needs? It has proven to be a, a good solution, and we are thinking to scale this up in other in other teams. We've got another one now in in in, in basically for the motor product, but we are thinking to expand that much more in 2020. 
uh, lessons learned about that. I think most of you will have heard of, of most of them. For me, it's having a common purpose and, 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 uh, and someone that is actually very, very much driven to make this happen. Otherwise, it's very difficult to break the silos of the company. No? And then having uh, the support of, of, the, of the top management is, is, is also very, very important. This team is currently working, it's half-half, actually. It's, it's a scrum, but then we've got this, uh, um, this supplier. Uh, and, and then uh, sometimes we get some, some, some problems in managing the way we've got our deliveries with the supplier, because they are not used to, to work in, in scrum. But at the same time, uh, we, are, we are working on it. But, I think just the value of, and, and that's, uh, I think it's important also. It's saying uh, it's not only if you apply the method, I think if you change the way you operate and you change and you build teams, uh, multidisciplinary teams, which doesn't mean that they don't need to be reporting to their area. They still report to their areas, but they have a common purpose. There is someone which is driven and it's following the value uh, the flow of, of, of the value for the customer, they are much more powerful, powerful in, delivering, uh, in delivering something for our customers. Uh, after this, well, spaces or, or uh, we, 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 we have completely changed our, our buildings. We have started with our building in Barcelona and we are changing also building in, in, in Madrid in terms of like the setup of the, of the building. That's very important because these teams are working uh, in, in, in a more collaborative way. So before we used to have like large meeting rooms, but just a few. Now we've got smaller meet, meeting rooms, but much more. We've got different types of meeting rooms. We've got one-to-one uh, -one meeting rooms. We've got large meeting rooms, but, but much less. And then we've got different spa open spaces like concentration space and other type of spaces for uh, communication or even to, to hang out a little bit more. This is probably, mm, it's just an enabler, but I think it is also very important in terms of like changing the mindset of the people. We, we don't believe that we can make this change without making the, the change in the mindset. And then in terms of culture, I think we've seen in, in a lot of the conference before, all the, all the different charts. This is one of, one of the charts that we have, basically we've got a portfolio chart, We're kind of, we are building a kind of Ovella now. I, I'm not sure, sometimes we are experimenting a bit because we don't know where it is going to bring all of all these things. And if it works, we take it. If, if we don't work, we don't take it. But basically we've got a portfolio chart right now. And, and then we've got also for uh, three of the different value streams, we've got uh, also this We've got Kanbans, and then we've got this, we call them comm cells, these communication cells. It's basically what it is doing is uh, understanding what it is the backlog, what we, what we have in, in, in work in progress, and who is responsible, as well as the interdependency. So it's a, it's a mixture of, of things. But I think the important thing here is that it helps us, it helps us a lot to measure the, the, the value that we are creating how efficient we are in that value and in that, in that flow, or if we are uh, very much, uh, we've got a lot of whip, and then we, we can, I mean, it, and, and who are the blockers of, 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 that, of that work in progress? Now, basically, we, we take actions in, in the short term for, for, uh, to take out those roadblocks. No? Uh, one of the things that we, we are, we are going to start measuring is the cause of opportunity of the delay, you know, or the cause of delay, because this is something that we are not very good at. Actually, we're pretty bad at. I mean, we are an insurance company and we've got money to spend. Uh, and then managing the cost of delay and, and, and putting that urgency, I think it's something that it is very important uh, in the next years in order to be able to create that sense of urgency, you know? And, and, and link that with, uh, with the, uh, the objectives and the plan of the company, it is going to be one of the, of the most important things uh, probably in 2020, because that is going to give us a lot more clarity in where we invest the money and what we take 
back from it. At the, at the moment, and probably from a lot of your companies, it's, it's going to be quite similar. The financial planning cycle goes one way. The HR planning cycle goes another way. The project and IT investment cycle goes, uh, sometimes they are completely disconnected or they happen at, at the same time. So it's impossible to, 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 to interrelate what each of those needs. So basically you need, oh, I need X million dollars for investment. And so no, you have X minus 10%. Because we, we in financial, in the, in the financial cycle, we have decided this. So how we bring all this together is going to be one of the key things. And, 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 and the change for this is it's also making sure that everybody in the company is aware of, of those KPIs or those objectives. And we follow them uh, in a consistent way every day, every week, et cetera. Because there is a, a big disconnect between the plan and what we actually do uh, at the end of the year. Uh, and then what's, so what's next for us in, in, in Zurich? I think we've come from a different approach sometimes in terms of like we, we've come from the business, not from the IT side, in, in order to talk about like agility and business agility, because we believe it's a, it's a, it's a change in the way, uh, in, in the mindset of the company. And, and we saw very difficult that the, that the IT department could make the change for the whole company. I think that was counterproductive. So we basically started with the business. We have IT involved, but we started to start changing the minds of the business. And we started to do it also, I think it is important to mention, in a holistic way, not just putting methods or or tools, you put Kamana, you put Jira, you put whatever you want, because that is going to affect only part of, of, of what you are doing. And what we want, I mean, the problem that we saw at the beginning, it was a, a, an industry problem. It was a, a problem that is, is, or you act radically differently, or you probably you will be in trouble in, in five to 10 years time down the road, no? So basically, uh, I think that was uh, the change or the way we approach it. And what we see it forward is, uh, first of all, we need to incorporate those back office functions that currently they are working with the current methods, they are not measuring anything. And we want them to get, get them on board, at least with Kanban, measuring what they are doing and, and, the, and starting the conversation of how they can improve. Because at the end of the day, Kanban is only the method of continuous improvement to, to start a conversation based on not uh, what someone thinks, but based on, on facts and, and, how, and how they, how, what they say to us, no? So first of all, bringing those folks into the conversation right now. The second piece is uh, we want to expand the, these new uh, uh, multidisciplinary teams into two or three more uh, teams based on, on the value stream, on, on, on what the customer, uh, on the customer or, the, or, or, or the, the group of products that serve those, those customers. And having those teams, uh, uh, but, but that's obviously that's something that is going to create uh, more expense base because it's, it's something a little bit more expensive, at least at the beginning. But we believe that we need to do it in a cert we cannot do it for all the company, but we need to do it for, for, for certain teams that uh, it makes sense. And basically we have started with, with those business teams that uh, are requiring more, more change, as well as those business teams that are more uh, prepared. Because even though you see that there is a need from a market perspective, from market context to do it, Sometimes you see that some of the teams are not prepared to do that. So basically, the idea is step-by-step uh, step, uh, expanding those teams. And then uh, the third thing, from my perspective, is how we engage much more with, with IT in, in, in this conversation. I mean, we, IT has been part of all of this. But at a certain point, we need to understand uh, what it means in terms of like, how we, uh, how we create more flexibility in, in our IT team uh, in order to be able to deliver 
uh, more closely to what our customers want and 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 with uh, and more quickly or quick quicker uh, because um, and that is and this is a conversation that uh, it's not an easy conversation but we need to understand uh, what parts need to be internalized or externalized of the of of the, of, of the software development and all this kind of stuff I, I I think that is the conversation for 2020 and 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 how how we deal with that conversation with, with our IT team is going to be uh, the success or not of, of, of this. That's Questions? How far ahead are you planning? <laughs> well, I, I don't have a, a certain time frame, but we believe this is going to happen in, in 2020, part of it. I mean, we probably this is not something that will take one year or two years. It's going to take uh, many years. We ha we've been 1.5 years into this trip right now. Uh, I think bringing these conversations, uh, I think it's going to take a, a, a few years. But my target is to have uh, a lot of the back office on board uh, already in 2020. And part of, the, uh, of how we integrate IT uh, and the technology into, into, into this new a uh, way of, of doing also uh, in 2020. It's a question about uh, your business and not specifically about Kanban and Agility, okay? Mm. Uh, you have been talking that, you know, all these changes are affecting the insurance company and, and, and the like. So my question precisely is, you have some business units, I understand, that are going to be more affected and more rapidly with this you know, transformation of the marketplace. And uh, how do you detect which are the business units more affected, okay, uh, for this disruption that is happening in the market? And uh, how about data, data collection, I mean, how do you get the insights from the, mark, from the market that you need to change? Because perhaps what you feel that you need to change is not, or maybe not, what the market is telling you. Mm -hmm. So I, as I said at the beginning, or a part of the presentation is, so what we see is a lot of the change that before was coming from, from the more direct distribution, now it's happening all, all over the value chain of, of the insurance company. So I would say, and, and that means uh, it's, it's about distribution because a lot of the investment is coming from the distribution piece in terms of like insure text and, and so on. But we see by instance claims as one of the sources of, of, of change in, in the insurance uh, industry. Uh, both in terms of like uh, process automation but also in terms of like, and that goes back to the second, your second point, which is uh, about like how you use data in, in order to maximize the, the impact of this, no? Um, uh, we, at the end of the day, the in, claims is basically 80% or 70 something percent of the, of the cost of, of, of the whole insurance, no? Um, the rest is like expenses and, 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 and benefits. Uh, what we are seeing is that being smarter in the way we manage our claims uh, and, and the use of data to do so, it's going to be uh, also a, 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 huge, uh, uh, a, a huge competitive advantage. So I would say it is affecting everything, but I would say distribution, from direct distribution to how we operate with our agents and, and brokers, 
because it is also changing uh, the whole setup of, of brokers and, and, and agent channels. And then uh, claims is, is, the, is the third piece that we believe it's, uh, it's going to change rapidly. How we integrate uh, data into, into those decisions? It's, that's, a, that's a big question. Uh, I think, uh, well, we, we have started uh, doing some, some stuff on, 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 on process automation. I think it is going to move into every day collecting more, more information in, in, uh, from external databases. And that PSD2 is, is quite an interesting opportunity. But we are talking about like uh, including uh, a lot of companies are doing this already, but uh, credit scoring in terms of what, how we do underwriting. Also, the, the 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 corporate part of the of the insurance sector is going to be heavily disrupted. The, the corporate uh, products are very manual uh, historically, and they are based on the expertise of the underwriter. All this piece com complemented by by the um, by external databases and public databases or other types of, of 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 information will make make us much more uh, or much richer in the use of the information to make wiser decisions. I would say. I don't know if you am answering, but more or less, it's it's a diff it's a very difficult question that one. Yeah.